the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. If you're a student of history, it's fun reading about what Germany had to do after the First World War and even after the Second World War. When Germany lost the First World War, they had some people that they owed money to. They did a little bit of damage to a lot of Europe, mainly France. So after the war, Germany owed in the U.S. dollars, $33 billion in reparations to France alone. Now, it's interesting, of course, the French wanted their money. So, when Germany couldn't pay up, the French just took pieces of land. Of course, land that was rich in oil and other minerals that are good for the economy. This just made the Germans such happy, delightful people, right? No resentment in the German nation toward the rest of Europe after the Treaty of Versailles. Oh, but then comes World War II. They stop paying the reparations to the rest of Europe and to the United States. Hitler takes back the lands that the French took from them and does a little more damage than the Kaiser had done in World War I. It's amazing with these reparations, Germany finally paid off their World War I reparations as of 2013, almost a hundred years after the end of the war, they finally paid off what they owed. They're still not done paying off their World War II ones. Maybe that'll be in 30 or 40 years. For a long time, these reparations crippled the German economy and created resentment against the rest of their neighbors. That's what debt does. Earthly debt cripples a person. It drains their productivity. And debt is a training ground. It's like a boot camp for animosity and resentment. That's how it is to be in debt. Your life is controlled by your bondage to someone else. We have debt to individuals, schools, corporations, and the government. Being in debt to someone is a bad relationship. If you've ever been in debt to someone, does that relationship change? That's why you shouldn't borrow money from family or good friends. Because it changes the relationship from a good one into a bad one. You avoid the person. You resent them for wanting what is theirs. And your whole life is affected by the reparations you have to pay. The best day in a lot of people's lives, a day of great celebration, is a day when people finally pay off their car loan. They pay off the mortgage or finally get rid of all their credit card debt. It's a long, sacrificial, and frustrating task, paying off debt. But that's the way of the world. If you want something, you have to pay for it. And if you don't have the money, you take a loan out, and then you have to pay someone back so you can have what you want. No one else is going to get you out of debt. And even if they do, there is no such thing as a good Samaritan that's going to help you out of debt. There will be some little string attached to that good deed. You have to get your way out of debt. That's the reality. That's the way of the world. It's a fun place. The problem, though, for all of mankind is that we have a deeper, more severe debt than a financial one. We have the debt of sin. It's easy to apply the ideas of temporal debt to our debt of sin. We can look at the law of God, the Ten Commandments, as a financial plan to get out of debt before we die. But as St. Paul says to the Colossians, 
See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Now we here say this, of course, I don't look to the law to solve my problem with the debt of sin. I know that I'm going to sin and not be a pure person, so I don't even try. I look to Jesus for my salvation, my way out of debt. And you're right, the new man in Christ does that, the baptized man, the one who is a new creation in the blood of Jesus, does desire to look to Christ constantly. But that old Adam, that corpse of sin is clinging to you, always wants a worldly answer for the eternal question, an earthly solution to an eternal problem. The old Adam loves to think that the law or the keeping of the law will one day overcome sin. The old Adam is a worldly, logical, deluded thinker that buys into every plausible argument. So trust him not, beloved. Rather hear what the Holy Spirit inspired St. Paul to write, saying, And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. There's that beautiful gospel. The law demands you pay for the debt of your inherited and all your transgressions. And what happens? What happens when we have to pay for that debt? We come up short and we can't pay. So what does Jesus do? Does he come and encourage us with 12 easy steps to get ourselves out of the ditch? That's one a uh, fun modern Christian book I read, Getting Yourself Out of the Ditch. Don't ever read that book, please. It's a waste of trees. Jesus isn't our life coach, our financial advisor. He is our Savior. He forgives us, cancels the record of our debt. It's like you never had it. How does he do it? By nailing it to the cross. Rejoice then, beloved. Your debt is canceled. It's like you never took out a loan. It's like the debt never existed. Your credit score was never bad. It's always been perfect in Christ. Because Jesus took your debt, made it his own. And on the cursed tree, he paid it off and put the law's demands to death. You are debt free. No longer drawn out payment plans for you. No financial strategy. No automatic withdrawals from your moral bank account. No. A one time payment in full has you covered. Free from the debt of sin and the penalty of death and the harassment of the devil. So now when the Holy Spirit calls you to this sacred place today, you don't come here today to make a payment, to tell God how awesome He is, or to say, look God, how great I've been this week. No, you are brought to this place to make a withdrawal from the treasury of Christ's merit. You are called here today to receive the distribution of the cross, the gift of grace. So it's more than just a reminder that you were once forgiven. Here you actually receive forgiveness. Yes, all the debt you've incurred this week is canceled, paid off. You are forgiven. You are free. No reparations owed. Jesus has paid it all for you. And he has an abundance for us to take from. In Jesus' name, amen.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.